Hello everyone, this is Jasmina and in this video I'm going to talk about the use of color in feng shui. And now many people um, who start learning feng shui, they note there are color associations with the nine sectors in the low shoe chart. And they put, they want to put extra meaning onto this. However, this doesn't really have meaning. The elements have meaning, the colors do not. When feng shui was created, books were very hard to reproduce. They had to be copied by hand. Therefore, they were very precious items and not to be taken with you when you travel because you worry about theft, you worry about them getting damaged, them getting wet, you know, and uh, just way too many things to worry about when it comes to the books because they are so precious and so hard to get. And especially with feng shui, they were very, very well guarded because they didn't want this information to come out. And part of the reason is, is actually feng shui is pretty easy. Once you have the whole picture, um, I can see why they don't want this out because it's too easy to do. So uh, this is why they were so restrictive of this. However, the color probably wasn't there to begin with. The color is there for a purpose. It allows new practitioners to be able to remember better what element is associated with which numbers, that is, which stars. So uh, I've used this. When I started learning feng shui, I could see the image of the lo shu in color, and I had the lo shu path um, in, my, in my muscle memory of my hand. And so I could always remember this. And so I didn't have to have a book. I didn't have to have a reference thing. I knew what element it was, even very beginning of when I started to learn feng shui. So uh, that made it a lot easier. But of course, now I don't need to think about the colors to be able to figure that out because I've done it so much. But when you first start out, this can be a little confusing. Now. Again, the color was used as an associative memory trick and it does not contain any other meaning. And this drives, I'm sure, some feng shui practitioners out there crazy because they, they, they go into color. Now, I have not found any master, any true master, uh, because anybody can call themselves the master, uh, where it says in the ancient text that color is a tool to be used in feng shui. Element is, color is not. This is a modern interpretation by non-masters, uh, regardless of what they call themselves. Now, just to give you an idea, I am not a master. I'm a practitioner who is probably a bit more experienced than other practitioners, especially ones that use color, uh, because they have a very low level of understanding of this. Now, colors, again, are only used to remember the elements. And many people are visual. I'm a visual person too. And so, again, when I started learning it, I could picture the tong shu in color. And I could see that image in my head and then I knew which elements were which. The elements are important. They are actually very crucial to understand feng shui. But the, it's the elements that are important. The colors are not important. So I always tell people, paint your walls the color you enjoy looking at. It will make you feel better to be in the space. It, it, you know, there are colors that they that these other practitioners would recommend you paint walls, and I could never live in some of those spaces because it's like, no, that that color is not me. I couldn't handle staring at walls that color. So don't worry about color because it's the element that's important. The color is not. You can hang photos or art that you enjoy anywhere in your house. Doesn't matter what color they are. Doesn't matter if they're black and white. These are totally 
free. There's no restrictions in feng shui for this. Images of water and fire do not activate like real water and fire. So that's because they're just images. So if you're going to want to activate, use real water or real fire. Um, of course, you have to be careful with real fire. You know, you want to be there. So this is why a salt lamp is used to keep the energy going after you've finished burning a short uh, few minute candle. Now, the only caution here is that you do not nail a picture hanger into a, a location in your house that has an annual affliction when you're not within the sun and moon arrival dates. And, uh, and, and you still have to be a little careful when you do that. Uh, there's restrictions, and that's in my video that discusses the sun and moon arrival dates. Now, instead, you can use those self-stick picture hangers. I think they're called 3M Command Strips is one of the big name brands. This allows you to place and remove the hangers without damaging the wall. This is ideal. Then you can move your photographs and, and pieces of art anywhere. Just make sure that the command strip or whatever picture hanger you're using can handle the weight uh, of whatever your artwork is because that you don't want it dropping <laughs> because uh, if that happens to be in a place where you have an annual affliction and it falls, eh, yeah, that's going to activate things because that uh, and usually uh, also damages the photo or the piece of artwork. So that is one thing you have to be careful about and different different uh, sizes of these command strips can handle different weights. So that's basically it. I'd like to thank you for watching. Please feel free to contact me here or leave a comment if you have any questions.